Hi, I'm Jessica Sixsmith and I'm an artist from Manchester um, and I paint a lot of sunsets and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video today. Um, so I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint this little sunset right here. So it's a really cute little palm tree summery landscape um, that I thought I would paint today because it's very frosty outside and you know I just needed to add a bit of warmth to my studio so exactly what I've done. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn how to paint this, then stick around and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, and if you like the video, please do like and subscribe, help a girl out, I'm new here, um, so I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, hope you enjoy. So I'm using Winsor & Newton acrylic paint, I'm using Process Magenta, Titanium White, Naples Yellow and Prussian Blue. So for the surface I'm using Arteza, it's 300 GSM watercolour cold pressed paper and I've also got some painter's tape on there for a nice border. Um, I'm also going to be using this acrylic ink, it's Prussian blue with a nice thin pointy brush. Um, I'll be using that at the end, you'll see. Um, you're also going to need a wide flat brush, um, I'm using Daler and Rowney and some fluffy blending brushes as well, I'm using some makeup brushes. You'll see that I've also got a tea towel there and a spray water bottle um, and I'll show you that they come in really handy later on. But yeah, for now I am mixing a red, the Process Magenta um, with the white to make a nice sort of pale pinky colour. So for the purpose of this video, I'm using a disposable palette, just because it looks really nice on the eye, you know, it's really nice and clean, nice bright white surface. Um, and that was actually a gift to me, um, that was gifted to me by my grandma for Christmas, and it's from a lovely little shop called Sostrine Green um, in Manchester City Centre, which has just recently opened, and it's amazing. Um, but yeah, so now I am mixing the Naples yellow with some white. You'll see that obviously I cleaned my brush before that to avoid getting the pink in the yellow. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just mixing that there. Um, again, just cleaning my brush um, between the mixes before I go into mixing the, the blue and the white later on as well. Okay, so with a damp brush, I'm just going straight into the process magenta. So that's not mixed with anything. It's just pure magenta from the tube. Um, and as you can see, I'm just pasting that on. So I'm just going, I'm going to be blending from dark to light. So that's why I'm starting with the darkest colour that we've got there on the palette. Next I'm going into the paler pink colour that we mixed earlier and I'm just pasting that so I'm getting quite a, a lot on my brush and then I'm just pasting that underneath the dark colour that we've already put on the paper. So I'm ever so slightly blending upwards so I'm going from left to right but I'm gently just going up slowly um, to get that nice blend. Next I'm just washing my brush out and then I'm going to wipe that um, onto the tea towel just to get the brush a bit drier and um, which helps for blending. You'll see that I've also got a water spray bottle so I'm just spraying the paper with that because it helps to keep the paint a little bit wetter for longer and it helps with blending as well. Then I'm just adding a lighter colour so I've added even more white to that pink and I've popped that underneath that colour there and then repeating that process again blending upwards. Now I'm getting my fluffy blending brush and I'm going to gently, ever so slightly, touch the paper with this um, and blend it up. But I do increase the pressure as I go upwards um, because I think the paint was drying a little bit so I had to give a bit more um, oomph to it. So I had to put, add a bit more pressure to help the blending um, and then yeah, repeating the process as I come down as well. A good tip for cleaning the blending brush as you go along is to spray the tea towel with the water bottle um, and then wipe the paint off the brush onto the tea towel um, and this way you 
you know, you're cleaning it as you go along and it also avoids it from hardening later on. So if you forget about it, then you're going to have, you know, a bit more of a struggle cleaning that brush. So that's a good tip that I have to do that as you go along. Okay, so as you can see now, I am going into that colour again. I'm adding white now and repeating that process. So I sprayed the bottle, keep cleaning my brush as I go along and I am blending that up into the darker pink. So I'm just speeding this bit up now, otherwise it's going to be a very long video. Um, but essentially I'm just repeating the process that we've already done. So I'm just going over the paint again. Um, and this really helps to, to bolden the colours, you know, make them a bit more vibrant. Um, and it just stops it from being so pale as well. Because when you do add the white, it can sort of take over a little bit. So sometimes it does help to go back in there with a bit more colour, which is exactly what I'm doing here. So now where I just added the white, I'm going to go on top of that with the paler yellow colour that we mixed earlier. So I'm just pasting that on there and I am slowly blending that upwards into the pink. So now I'm taking the paler blue colour that we mixed earlier and I'm just pasting that all on the bottom and that's going to be the C. So now I've just added a bit more white to that blue colour and I'm adding that to the top part of the C and then blending that down into the blue that we've already put on there. Now I'm just going to get the hairdryer out and I'm going to dry this layer um, because I'm impatient and I wanted to get the video done ASAP. So now I am adding some happy little clouds, as Bob Ross would call them. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm just going in there with a little brush um, and with the process magenta and I'm just making some random shapes. So that right there, what I just put on the palette is a glazing medium. Um, you can use water instead of this, that's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just using that because I recently discovered it and I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm just using it to blend out the colour, so I'm just blending it into the background and it gives more of a softer edge um, rather than it just being a harsher line basically. So I'm just repeating that process with all the clouds across the paper, so adding a little bit of the glazing medium. But now I'm going in there with a fluffy blending brush just to give the clouds a little bit more of a softer edge. Now I'm just adding a little bit of white into those clouds. So this just breaks things up a little bit um, and adds a bit of highlight as well. Because so far um, I've only really done one shade of the pink in the clouds. So yeah, just adds a bit more interest to the sky really. I'm also making the clouds slightly smaller um, the lower down the sky I go. Um, I think this just helps with perspective really and it helps to draw your eye to the centre. Now I'm just adding a little white circle for a sun or a moon, whatever you want it to be. Um, and then I'm going to be adding a little bit more of that white into the sky. Um, just to give the impression that it's a bit lighter in that area and I'm also adding that into the sea to give a bit of a reflection. Now I'm going in there with the Prussian blue and I'm just adding a few bumps here and there to give the impression of some mini waves or ripples, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm just building that upwards slightly. Now that I've just tidied up the horizon line with the paler blue that we mixed earlier, I'm using that blending brush again to blend that out and make a bit more of a softer line. I'm also going in there with the glazing medium again, so that's going on top of the paint that we just laid down. 
and I'm going to be going into that with the blending brush to blend that all together a bit more. And don't forget, instead of the glazing medium, you can always use just a little bit of water or you can use the spray bottle um, so you don't overdo it. I also went into the sea with a bit more of that paler pink colour just to give a bit more of a reflection and I did the same with the white underneath the sun. Once that layer is dry, or once you've hair dried it, as I did, um, you can go in there with this acrylic ink. So as I said, I'm using the Prussian Blue acrylic ink um, and I'm just dipping my thin pointed brush in there and creating some shapes for a bit of land. Now I'm adding a thin bendy tree trunk for the palm tree and as I go down the trunk with the brush I'm pushing down a little bit harder on the paper so that it's thicker at the bottom. Um, so then I have a thin pointy bit at the top and then a thicker trunk at the bottom. Now I'm panning out where I'm going to put the leaves. So now I'm adding more detail onto the palm tree leaves. So I'm adding just thin lines on there basically, so I'm doing thin lines, I'm doing longer lines the closer to the middle I go and then as I get further to the tip I'm just making those lines just a little bit shorter um, just to give a bit more of a triangular shape to the entire um, leaf. And I'm repeating that same process now, but I'm just doing a little palm tree to accompany the big palm tree. So now that I just darkened the tree trunks, um, I'm going into that horizon line um, with some land. So I'm starting off making some really thin mountains um, and then you'll see that I do make them a bit more um, bumpy later on. Yeah, so that's more like it. I just wanted that to be a bit thicker, more towards the left, um, just to add a bit more interest so that your eye is drawn to different areas in the painting. So after adding a bit more plant life and grass, um, I get the hairdryer out again and I dry that because I'm impatient and I just couldn't wait to take the tape off. Another reason why I use the hair dryer at this stage is because apparently if you heat the tape up it makes it less likely to rip as you are pulling the tape off. So one of my lovely followers over on Instagram gave me that tip um, and it's worked here which is great so I'm going to keep on doing it. But yeah we're done here now, it's got a lovely frame, very happy with it and I hope you're very happy with yours too. If you did this please do tag me and as I say please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Bye!